funny you said Dow. I've had my eye on that recently, like the last couple of days. I'm like, wow, this looks amazing. I gotta see what's going on here. You see, it's a sign. It's a sign. <laughs> not financial <laughs> advice. Right. right. Take all the well, not financial advice again. Disclaimer. <laughs> right. But I will make my research about all of the DAOs and the metaverses. That's my okay. personal opinion. I'm not saying that goes okay. by and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, you know, obviously we're we're all very, very excited about VV and the future VV, VV verse. Uh, what if you were to pick a NFT that VV would come out with, which one would it be? Harry Potter. Mm. Obviously, right? <laughs> Harry Potter fan. Oh my God. I will, but also I would cry because of Harry Potter, but also I would like to have like um, classical books. To have mm. the ownership of classical books. Yeah. Oh my God. I think that it would be so cool. I think they're going to go there too. I think they're going to really do it. I have asked many times and they always say, no, we are not. But really? they always said that and then they release. So I don't believe them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you see, I would like it. You see, again, the first book I ever read was Jaws. And wow. to have a, a NFT of that book, Jaws, mm -hmm. would be very special to me. So I, I, I think that's awesome. Great mm -hmm. idea. I agree. Great. You know, I think um, we're going to get to a point where someone is going to step up. It could be Amazon. Maybe Amazon mm -hmm. needs to step back up into this space and start uh, NFT-izing their books. Mm -hmm. You know, like... I think that's a great idea. Because like I said, you know, we, we're dealing in, in uncertain times. We got all these natural disasters going on, people's houses being lost, all these collections being lost in the process. We, you know, but once it's on that phone, as long as you got an internet connection, it, it's, it's there, you know? So um, the ability, again, you know, think about how many times you go on a trip and you're like packing and stuff and you're like, Oh, I wish I could bring these three books. You know, yeah, you can, but how much space are you taking up, you know, away right. from that extra pair of shoes or something, you know? And you're like, so now to have it in your phone, it's nothing like it. And you can see that's what they were trying to do, you know, what, 10 years ago with Kindles and all this yes. stuff. I yes. think they yeah. understand the value of digitizing books, but it just didn't see the light of day properly. But I think it might come back. I think so. A lot of, of these things, is, it's timing. It's about timing. So as you mentioned, Kindle ten years ago was was crazy. I you know I read books on on the Kindle, but uh, I I just find that instead of having two devices, I just put it on this and I can right. read on this. I'm not a, a physical book reader um, anymore. So uh, I think that would just be amazing. Being able to um, like I love Dean Coons as an author. Me Being too, bro. Well, that's crazy. Oh, that is funny. That is. Look at that. We're interviewing I still have Matt. some of his books. I still have some of his books. Right. <laughs> but, but you know what would be awesome, too, is, um, you know, you guys got me to think, you know, how my brain works. You know, even when I'm thinking about how I'm building my NFTs coming, you know, um, it's interesting how you could take a book and how audio books are like the new thing. So now you could take a book, make it an NFT, and then also make it play audio, you know, and the person mm -hmm. could just mute it. You know, if they don't want to hear it. And it's all in one. Right, all mm -hmm. in one. I, I, I tell wow. you, man, whenever VV wants to hire me for their creative consultant. Yeah, like, I know. You, you have know. to talk to Riz, huh? I know, you know. Uh, gotta get this going, man. <laughs> we need Dr. Way, Strange in the team. <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. <laughs> by the way, Fast Eddie P is in the chat. Hey, Fast Eddie P. And by the way, everyone in the chat, I've got a link to Wendy, um, her, her YouTube channel. It's pinned on top. Go subscribe if you're not already. And it's uh, a really good channel, y'all. Really good content. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, awesome. Uh, Voices, of, she hosts uh, Voices of Evie. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so go check it out and uh, hurry back because, you know, you don't want to miss any part of this interview. All right. So what are your friends? Because we, we, we got to know a little bit about your youth and then we spoke VV. We, we spoke crypto. What, what do you, obviously you're, you're in it. 
What do your friends and family think about this whole vertical? Uh, well, my friends, I think they are paying attention right now because I told them back in March, uh, no one pay attention to me. But right now they are listening because they have seen like, especially my growth and how the NFT space changed me as a person. And so that has helped to let them know that there is another possibilities out there and not just their normal life, which is okay. But I think there is another world. And so that's why they are listening to me right now. In the terms of my family, well, they don't actually understand what I'm doing. So they're like, why are you doing the streams? What are you talking about? <laughs> Especially because of my background is was so, so different. And Very everyone- Very humble beginnings. Right. Yes, and I, they also, my whole life, my background is that I'm a office. I can teach in university. I have a master's degree. So my whole life, I focus on become one day a professor in university. And round, right now, I'm not doing like right. any of that. So right. it's like, why? when are you going to do your, to, how do you say to, uh, well, in Spanish, it's ejercer tu carrera, but it's like, uh, when you are going to work in the thing that you study, the, right? Right, right. Yeah, so um, that is the interesting part that they don't understand. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but it, that is it, what they say. Yeah, it takes, uh, you know, parents sometimes, you know, they have to realize uh, we go down these paths and then we realize it's just not our passion. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, there's, there's a very high percentage of people that go to school, spend all this money on school, you know, put the time in, they get the degree, and then they totally do not do anything related to their degree, you know? Um, yeah, and I still believe that I'm teaching in any sense, in some, in any way, like in some way, I'm still trying to teach people, trying to connect them so people understand better the space. So teaching and education is not just in a school for me. So I believe that I'm still doing it and I know that I have skills for, um, for doing so. So yeah, so it's, that is what is still, I don't feel bad about it, but still even I feel happy about doing it. Right, right. That's the main thing, you know. At the end of the day, is how you feel about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's your life. You know, so. Exactly, exactly. What happened with him? <laughs> I think he lost internet. Let me see. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Let's see. He's back. <laughs> Is he? I'm back. I am okay. back. All right. I am so sorry. This is, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the heck happened there. I, I lost internet. So what did I miss? I know I missed the best part. <laughs> don't worry. You did, man. It was getting real emotional over here, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, You're boy. about to cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we are kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so Wendy, I got a question. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you expect the initial look of Viviverse to be? Like we, you know, I always have this vision of like what it'll be when it's like blown up and developed. But like, I also like to think about like you know humble beginnings, like we talk about baby steps. You know, so what do you think the initial rollout will look like? Like just simple things we'll be able to, to do. I think it's going to look like Ready Player One. The part that I saw, the half, yeah. the first half, because <laughs> I remember seeing the DeLorean. That was right. like, oh, yeah. oh, this is how it's going to look. Because I have the DeLorean. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, wow, that is how I imagine uh, Vivi. I hope that it, it looked like that. <laughs> I agree. I think it is going to look like that. I think uh, it's going to be uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. And uh, Ready Player Two, the, as I mentioned, they talk about how it evolves. 
from glasses to a thing that you put on your head, like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, probes or whatever. And you actually like lay down and go to sleep and you, you go into like a dream state mm -hmm. is, is wild, is wild. But who knows, maybe, you know, one day in the future, it'll evolve to something like that. But with Neuralink, have you heard about Neuralink? Right. That, uh, maybe Star that is, right. So that is not that far, I think. I, I, I agree. I think that that's where, where we're headed. And, but at the very least, look, we're here at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. we, we're not letting this opportunity pass us by. Mm -hmm. I, like so I, think, I think that we're, we're fortunate. Mm -hmm. Very, actually very. I think this is a miracle that, well, sometimes it feels like we are not that early because I do know OGs of NFTs back in 2017. So it's like, wow, that's a long time. <laughs> but still, I think we are early for the mainstream, I guess. Right, right. Wow. I wish I would have jumped on that boat early, you know, like with, and caught Bitcoin and Ethereum back in, I hear people buying it in 2012 or even earlier, you know, it's just like, wow, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. I know. I knew about Bitcoin back in 2015. Um, but I didn't know how to buy Bitcoin. I knew I was going to invest anyway, because for me, it's like, it's so obvious that it's going to work. Exactly. And, but I didn't know how to buy back me then. Too. So Main yep. mm -hmm. I passed. Yep. And I, yeah, think that's, I, I think that's what, um, to a degree, because it's definitely not the same as back then. But I think to a degree, that's what um, Omi is going through. Um, there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of people locked out, um, or at least they feel like it, or they just feel like, you know, they'll just wait, you know, they're content with waiting and being in that next wave, you know, and playing it from there, you know, understanding that it definitely is going to have so many catalysts coming mm -hmm. every so often to keep pushing it, you know, um, I don't know if there's a bad time to really buy on me, you know, because there's been things you've probably seen it being in a crypto mm -hmm. space so long. You know how like there's certain coins you could look at now, but back then they were like, you know, less than a dollar. And even then you were sitting here like, should I, should I spend $40, you know, on this? And in then now point? you look at it and it's like $20 a thing, you know, you're like, damn, like, That was nothing back then. So it's like all your perception. Like right now, we're sitting here arguing over buying points on something that's less than a penny. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I feel like I don't care what it is. When I have the money to put in, I don't care if it's $10, $15. I just do it just because like where I see it going. Now, once it hits a dollar, I'll have to be a little bit more frugal with my investments on it. But that's what I mean. It's under a freaking penny. Like, what do you no, know? I know. Who's that? Uh, it's so cheap it's yeah. crazy so i mean if it hits a dollar we're rich like mm -hmm. you know and i spoke to a lot of people and they're like right you know ten dollars is a little wild but they're like a dollar is definitely doable so i'm like mm -hmm. man i do remember the first time that i bought omi i was like seeing like all the numbers like i think i had like a hundred thousand omi or something i don't remember maybe i'm or even just ten thousand i don't know it was just a small amount of omi back in well last year and i was thinking well if it goes to the moon like to one dollar so it means that i will have like ten thousand dollars so exactly. for me it was like that is a lot of money oh exactly. my god so i just bought it because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it was yeah. not that much money anyway so yeah. and for me it's always important to invest only what i'm willing to lose right. so i don't invest like even what i invested back in 2018 was money that so my story about that was very funny because I have read about investing and all of this stuff and the rule of ne never invest anything that you're not willing to lose so one day I was going to go to the movies and I had like five dollars around that's the cost in Mexico mm -hmm. so I was thinking should I go to the movies or should I invest five dollars in crypto because right. still yeah. it doesn't right. matter it's you know it's still if I go to the movies I'm gonna lose the money anyway right. Right. But if I invest, maybe even I learn, even if I lost them. So for me, that's how it started. So I invested the $5. And I think one month later on, Bitcoin went up a little bit. So I, I think I earned a little bit more. 
So all the profit I reinvested and that's what I have done for three years. Of course, I put a little bit more of money, but once that I have known how to trade, how to do all of this stuff, I was more confident. But everything I started because I just risk five dollars. <laughs> right. that's, wow. that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And Fast Eddie P in the chat is saying that he loves you. So he, he loves that your your whole your mentality, the way you approached it and everything. Uh, that's that's dope. That's dope. And by the way, everybody in the chat, this is open forum. If you have any questions that you want us to ask, uh, put them down in the chat. And by the way, in the chat, I have it pinned her um, her link to her YouTube channel. So go subscribe. Uh, drop a like if you like uh, the interview so far. So okay, so we've spoken about a little bit, of, a little bit about everything. So <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious. What is your Grail. Uh, it's so funny. Crypto Pro uh, made a video that said, "Well, why people call it Grail? It should be Holy Grail." <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna. You know what, Crypto Pro? I'm, I'm gonna go Holy Grail. Um, VV collectible. So something you don't have, and then you know what? We're gonna go with something uh, physical. I know you mentioned the the the, the Barbie house and whatnot, but um, maybe something that you can buy. So something in the physical that you can buy that would be like. Your, your ultimate gift and something on Vivi? Uh, for the physical, I do have one. I want the first edition of Harry Potter, but the first one that was released in the UK, not the one on, well, as well of the US, but I would love to have the first edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, uh, the first, first, first one. That's in the physical world. And in the NF, in Vivi, I will say um, maybe uh, Marble number one, Secret Rare, I would love to have that one or partner the statue, but I will go more for the comics. I believe more in the comics. Sorry. Sorry no Interesting. Sorry. Wow. So do I. So I, do I. A comic lover. Now, why uh, is that? Why? Uh, well, besides that, all my friends, Sleepy Comics and Comics and Crypto, have they have made a really good content and I have had them, so I have learned the importance of comics. So I have realized that comics has, they have more, um, how do you say, foundation of that is going to hold like in a bear market, what is going to hold like the Marvel number one. I know that it has a history. It's the first comic of Marvel. So it has a, a history behind that is going to sustain the price. Even if it has a dip, it still is going to be the first Marvel comic that has like more than 50 history so for me that is important Very meanwhile true. the collectibles yes they do have a history maybe that's why I, the statue i would say that maybe that one is as well something that i would like to have but um it's the first time that we have in the nft format so the story behind it is not that strong like the marvel wow. number one and also i don't think i've ever heard anybody bring this up before and i think <laughs> that this is a major thing like honestly lately i've been shifting uh my moves to to grabbing more marvel one so it's just funny um that you said that because that's the way i see it too but i didn't really process it that yeah. way for me marvel number one comics even the comments because i'm team common <laughs> right. for yeah, me that is like common since the beginning <laughs> <laughs> So I, for me, what I, my, one of my strategy is like investing like the, in Bitcoin, that is like the secure, the most secure crypto yeah. out there. So for me, the crypto, the Bitcoin of VV is marble, is, is marble number one, wow. all of them. I like it. I like yeah, I it. I or even Fantasy Four uh, does uh, that one as well. Right two, for me, in my opinion. I agree. You know, my third on the list would have to be Amazing Spider Man. Ah, number yes. one. Yes. That's my third on the list. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you 100%. So, I mean, my fourth would be to... Journey into Mystery 15. Yes, as well. But it's but just time me... slept on right now. But yes, I agree with you. And I think uh, when big comic collectors, because I really have learned so much from Sleeping Comics and Sean from Comics and Crypto, and I have made my research. And also my brother is, he is the nerd about comics. So I also go with him. Mm -hmm. Hey brother, what should I do? Before that I met uh, Sleeping and Comics and Crypto, my brother was the one who told, was telling me, wow, you have to buy this one. That's what I have. Well, I'm a big whale <laughs> of eight <laughs> comics, <laughs> Marvel number one, but I have two low mints on, the, on them. But I want to buy more. 
because that's what I want to do. You know, put my money in a secure, well, right. kind of secure. Right. Um, as secure as uh, it can get on the app, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you, yeah, you know, yeah. something interesting, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I uh, made a video where I call comic book stores and I call some big comic book stores. I called one in Times Square. It's a really big comic book store. And I, and I asked on the phone, like, hey, you guys know what BV is? What, what is this BV stuff? In this? And, the, and none of the comic book stores. And these are people who obviously either own or work at a comic book store. And I, I called a few of them and none of them knew what BV was. And that told me everything I needed to know. Because I, I know that when all it takes is BV to come out with like a one page article in a comic book and say, Hey, look, you know, you can get these Marvel number one, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And you can come over to the app, you get it, you get it on the blockchain and that's it. These collectors are going to start coming and they're going to start scooping up all these Marvel ones. uh, As you mentioned, all these key books, amazing um, fantasy, fantastic four, they're going to come and just, and these prices are going to go berserk. And it's just that showed like for a lot of early. We're early. Right. And I think the main one of the main ones that people are gonna flock to out of the cheaper ones still left, I think it's gonna be New Mutants 98. Mm. I think people are gonna flock to that because when they come in and they see Holy Grail comics first appearances and they if they feel priced out of a lot, that's the book you can still get that's pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that's the first floor that's going to get eight up. I think mm-hmm. Ultimate Fallout is also another one. The yeah. first mm-hmm. appearance of Miles Morales. I think that's another one that the comic book collectors in real life they love. And the fact that when he comes out with his own movie, I think that you know that's going to be another one that's going to be, uh, uh, you know, it's going to see a lot of growth in value. Uh, actually, speaking of that, I was looking the market because I was expecting to have more dip, but even right now when even if it goes to, let's say that I buy in 50 and it goes to 25, I know that in five years, that one has high potential because uh, that's the one that I, that will, that will be like a investment, like a risky investment for me. But I'm very conservative in what I invest. Like I really do my research. I don't just go for what everyone says, but I really take the time. And with that one, with my Morales, I do believe that it has a high potential. And even if I lost, it still is meaningful because it's Latino, I think, and it's right. a, right. a black character. And for me, that is right. very important because um, right. I know what it feels to have like a character that you can relate with your culture, so. Absolutely, yeah, I think that that all, I think that's why, why he's become popular, you know, is because of that, it's something different. And, Mm -hmm. you know, people can can relate and stuff. So I, I, again, there's all those books that, uh, again, the ones that are the the big, big, big bangers, the the mucho caliente comic books (laughs) in real life, you know, as we mentioned, those those handful, those are going to be like, you know, Mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. And I think it's crazy when you even, I think it's, it's interesting when you really almost zoom out and try to project like a year out from now, let's say, and you're that new person coming in. I mean, imagine if you were on Instagram, you know, you're scrolling and every four pages you get that ad, you know, imagine if the ad was like starting at $190, Marvel number one for common. I bet you a bunch of people would press that button and come right over to be like, that's a great, that's still cheap when we think about it. It's just the fact that we're trying to spread our money across getting so many things. We're worrying worrying about having gems for the next drop, what it could be. But other than that, I mean, we written now that she's talking about it, like it really makes me want to go harder and get even more because I feel like it's still underpriced like crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with you. Absolutely. I, I, I really do think so, man. Again, uh, I was when, when after I made that video and I saw that these comic book employees did not even know what VV was, I said, oh, forget it. Forget it. We're so early. And these things, you know, again, it's just going to take a, a, some marketing on a comic book. All they have to do is put a center, like a full page, you know, ad inside the, the comic books, run it for a few months. Forget yeah. it. You know, but. Mm-hmm. 
you know so okay so we, we obviously see you know so, you know we 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 all on the same page here uh with when it comes to comic books absolutely and and the thing is when those that we mentioned go go up it, it the other ones because now other people are coming in who, who maybe not be able to it, get those other ones they'll right. scoop up the others that's what books. i'm saying so you're gonna get think, what you could afford you know mm -hmm. it's like wendy when she came on the app she didn't come in trying to get, you know, um, a rain of corn or whatever, you know, she came in and got, you know, what she could. And that's what I did too. You know, I was, you know, I was a little taken back, like, wait, $25 for this thing? Like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does it do? Exactly. You know, I was, I was the same way, you know, and it's just so funny how like, even back in those days, Jose, like, there were so many things like still available after a drop. Like there literally was a store. Like you could log into the app and go under the store and still see Batgirl for retail, all these different I things, know. all the, the different hoverboards. Some of them were still left over. And now I look at that and I just feel like an idiot. Like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I did I buy more bad girls back then when they were just sitting there because I was like, why no one is buying that? Like everyone's like paying attention to, I don't remember what was that. And I was like, hmm, I'm gonna buy it. Like I need dip a little bit. I'm like, still, this is what I always think. When I invest in something, it's because I do believe it has high potential. And when everyone underestimate them. Right. That's yes. right. Yes. You gotta feel confident that like you did your due diligence. Mm -hmm. There was something that told you to pull the trigger. So mm -hmm. it's like when the times start getting rough, you just got to go back to your mindset of what made you do that, what you were thinking, and just mm -hmm. stick to your guns. Because I notice most of the times, like almost every time I buy something, um, I'm thinking, okay, I'll flip it. You know, when I go to flip it, all of a sudden, all these people will start undercutting and putting theirs up for sale. I'm like, where did you guys come from? And then, you know, you're like, okay, let me bring the price down. And you bring the price down, it sells. And then here we are now in a dry spell with no drops. And now everything's going through the roof. Like I could have made so much profit if I would have just waited, you know, and I keep going through this process over and over. So just hopefully one day it's going to stick in my brain, like chill out. You know, it's kind of like the comics, like when they drop, like we all know pretty much rares are going to be $40. We know, you know, the common is going to be $11, 12 $13. You know, we know these things, but yet right after the drop, I find myself in the marketplace messing around with these people trying to sell me comics for too much money. And I'm over here trying to buy it, you know, and I'm realizing <laughs> like, some of this stuff is addictive. There's an addictive aspect to this, <laughs> this process, even the drop itself. So like I'm sitting there trying to get a comment and I'm saying to myself, if I wait till like nine o'clock tonight, or even tomorrow, I close this app and don't open it. I guarantee you, commons will be eleven dollars. The rare will be forty, you know, so on and so. And then, sure enough, you know. And then you're looking at your stuff like what you paid for it and the floor price. And you're like, I knew it. I should have just waited, you know. Right? So yeah, so I agree. So so Wendy, so speaking about all these moves that that you know we've made and lessons learned, uh, can you share with us uh, the best? move that you've made on uh, the app versus the worst? The best was the Lucky Rabbit for the Secret Rare of Fantasy IV and the Ultra Rare of Fantasy IV and the Low Min, I think it's 800 or something. That was the best trade so far. And also the worst one was um, that I, so one week before Disney, I forgot that Disney was coming. So I also have another Lucky Rabbit, uh, low min, like 200 something. And someone sent me an offer for 4, 4K gem, like 4,000 gems for that rabbit. But uh, at that time, my rabbit was like in 6,000 for my min. And I was like, mm, I try to, I don't like to low my price. I'm really hard on negative. Like if I set a price, that's what I'm going to go after. Even if I have to wait a lot of time, I don't mind. But because of that, I knew that the price was like really low for my main. So I rejected. But I forgot totally about the Disney week. So I remember that like by the night or the next or the day after. And I was like, man, what did I do? I'm on the morning. I forgot about the drop. 
I forgot about the Disney moment. So in that sense, if I had the time, like if I can go back to the time, I, I sell the Lucky Rabbit, invest in all the moments and buy again the, my rabbit. Because I really like that rabbit. I really like it. So, but yes, so that was the worst decision that I did. But it, that was because thanks to my PhD, I forgot things. <laughs> so that was like distracted. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, very cool though. Very cool. So, you know, so speaking of time, right? If you could hop in a DeLorean and go back to any point in time, any place in time, uh, where would you go? And then the same for the future. Where would you go? I like in the past. Um, I would go back to the with the Greeks back way, 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 way before and sit with some of the philosophers because I do believe that's when the basically all the wisdom and all the knowledge came, but also to China, but when we had Confucius and Lao and all of that, uh, like really, really wise people to learn from them. But that is in the past. In the future, um, the day, one day before I'm going to die. Mm. So, so I know what I have done. <laughs> 